Hello and welcome back to my channel, Queen of Sheba. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from my usual videos. So it's today is not about fashion, it's not about beauty, and it's not about designer handbags. I'm sorry. Uh, but I have had loads of messages uh, from some of my viewers um, to do a video about things that I've learned around the workplace. I do run my own PR business out of Australia and uh, I've been running that for almost five years now and it's, and it's quite successful. So I guess I just wanted to talk about some of the observations that I've made from running my own business and a few little life lessons that I've learned over the last couple of years. So I've got my phone and I've got a few little points that I want to speak about um, and maybe you guys will get something out of it, maybe you won't, but these are just my observations uh, and I thought that I would share with you because I have had quite a few messages uh, from people especially after I did the girl boss video if you guys wanted to see more videos about work life I guess uh, for some of the the younger viewers just some life lessons that I've learnt uh, from running my own business I have found it is so important to just be in the moment. I am at heart quite an anxious person, so I'm constantly living in the future. I'm constantly being two, three, five steps ahead of where I actually need to be. So this has been a really big lesson for me because when you're running your own company and because my business is a PR agency, we've got like phones ringing, we've got mobile phones ringing, we've got emails coming in, I've got people in my face the whole day, uh, which is great, it's very dynamic and it's very crazy most of the day. So I need to be in that moment. So I'm giving my team or my clients the best part of my brain that I can give them at that time. So it's really important to just be in the moment and it's also really important, I have learnt, to enjoy the moment as well because things and life just happen so quickly. And I didn't want to get caught up in the rat race of just not enjoying life. I did that for the first couple of years and I'd kind of get to the end of the year and be like, whoa, what just happened? What did I actually do this year, you know? I'd look at different photos from back over the year on events that we did or projects that we worked on and I was kind of a little bit upset because I I think for most part I wasn't actually living in the moment. I was just like, right, what do I got to do next? And I wasn't actually just sitting back and going, wow, look what we've done. And you know, it only has to really be a few seconds for you to do that on the job each day, every day to kind of take it all in. Um, it's kind of like when people get married, I think, and they, they, you know, there's such a lead up to that day, and they get to the wedding, and then bang, it's over. And Phil and I, when we got married, we made a real point of uh, escaping for just 10 minutes, just to take it all in and just be with each other at that moment. Um, so I think it's really important to just be in the moment, enjoy where you are, enjoy what you're actually doing, so that you can look back and go, yeah, wow, I was there, and we made that happen. Otherwise, sometimes it would just happen and bang, it's over and, you know, years have passed and you just look back and go, wow, did that, did that even happen? Be in the moment. Very important. This is such an important lesson that I have learned along the way. Choose your battles, kids. Choose your battles because there is so much stuff that's going to happen in the workplace. There's going to be he said, she said kind of scenarios happening the whole time. When you work in business, there are going to be internal politics happening the whole time. I used to get so worked up about every little thing because I am a perfectionist and I wanted things to just be like spot on. But I have learnt, my friends, I have learnt that you have to pick your battles. Devil is in the detail in my work. So every little issue that does pop up, it is really important. And I'm not discarding certain things by saying, choose your battles, don't worry about that, she'll be right, move on, doesn't matter. Things do matter, absolutely. But what is important with what I have learnt is how much energy and I, am I going to put into this tiny little issue that has popped up? Am I really going to get on the phone and really cause a massive issue about this little thing that has popped up? No, probably not because I know in two weeks time there's going to be an even bigger drama that then I have to put my energy into and make a real song and dance about what has just happened. So that has been a really big lesson for me to learn because in the first year things would happen and I'd be like, ah, oh, what is this? What is going on? And I'd be quite dramatic about that particular problem. Then a week later, an even bigger, like times 100 issue would happen. And then what, where have I got to go? You know, I don't have much to go. I've already carried on so much about this last issue. So 
I think it's all about just placing the appropriate amount of energy into every single issue and just and just kind of getting to the point where you can evaluate it and know how much of your energy you're going to put into each and every little problem that pops up. At the end of the day, you just can't please everybody. You have to look after yourself. That's probably one of the most important lessons that I have learned over the years because I am a people person and I wanna please everybody, but you have to look after yourself. You have to get enough sleep. It's only recently that I've stopped sleeping with my phone next to my bed, which sounds so hilarious because I would wanna be available 24 seven. And so for, for me, that meant waking up every hour on the hour checking my phone, checking my emails to see if my clients were happy uh, because some of them are based overseas. So I'm working constantly on different time zones. Um, but I've had to stop doing that because it really meant that I was getting crazy sleep. It was all over the place. Uh, it just meant that I didn't have the right amount of energy during the day. Also, it's really important just to feed yourself properly. Make sure your body's getting the right nutrition that it needs, you know, vegetables, um, great, healthy, clean protein. Uh, that's something that I have learnt in the last couple of years as well. Look after yourself from within and also exercise. I am the happiest when I'm exercising. I don't mean going crazy and running marathons or anything like that. I'd love to do that one day though, but uh, just on a week to week basis, go for a walk, get fresh air. Uh, I take my dogs for I run. Uh, it's really important for me to do that. I go to a personal trainer as well. I don't go overboard because I am a little bit OCD. When I get kind of my mind set on something, I really go for it. So I try not to get too crazy. Otherwise, I probably would become a gym junkie and I have done that in the past. Uh, but it's all about moderation, doing things for your body in balance and, uh, and yeah, pleasing yourself first before you please everybody else. That's really important. It's so important to just know that you don't have to say yes to everything. And this is something that I learned probably in year three of my business, uh, because when you have your own business, you are so eager and keen and you're ready to go and you just wanna say yes to every single opportunity that knocks at your door. The truth is you can't. You'll wear yourself out, you'll burn the candle at both ends and then you're no good to anybody, especially yourself and your business. So, you know, when opportunity now comes to me, I kind of sit back and evaluate, right, is this client one that I have like a great affinity for? Is this a client that I wanna put my energy into? Do I believe in it as a product and as a business? Do I like the client? Do I like the people that are working uh, for that company? It's, you know, and with time you can make these decisions. I know in the first couple of years of your business, you do feel like you have to say yes to everything because you're a startup. You know, you want to you want to do really, really well. You're conscious about cash flow the whole time. Uh, but I've finally got to a stage in my business where I can say no to certain projects. And I've done that quite a lot this year. It does also mean that you do miss out on a lot of money, but Money isn't the be all and end all. You've got to be happy. You've got to, you've got to work on projects that make you feel fulfilled as well and that you know you can make a difference to. And then also, if you say yes to absolutely everything, you're kind of putting so many eggs into your basket that it's, some of those eggs are gonna fall and you're not gonna do a great job. So I really had to make that conscious decision to say no to some things. Um, and yeah, that does hurt people, but you gotta, you gotta look after yourself again. Pleasing everybody is pleasing nobody and it's okay to say no. Yeah, now this, this is something that I've sort of really just recently come to terms with in the last sort of six months. I used to be a very black and white person. Things used to be yes or no for me. And I think the older that I'm getting, there's so many more areas and shades of gray in between. And it, it has been kind of a hard lesson for me to learn because I've, I've just been so yes or no about most things, but I don't know, I just think the older that I'm getting, maybe I'm getting softer. Um, but yeah, I'm reading a lot more, I'm educating myself a lot more about different topics, that things that have sort of never really interested me before. Um, getting into politics more passionately, uh, looking at investments more seriously, uh, looking at the environment more seriously as well. And um, I don't know, learning more about history has really kind of made me stop and go, you know what, things are just not black and white. There are so 
many shades of grey in between. Say for example, the phone rings and somebody that you've worked with for quite a number of years has just started barking at you and you've got no idea really what they're going on about, why they're in such a bad mood and they're kind of turning a tiny issue into a big issue and you're kind of on the other end of the phone going, right, okay. Mm. and you've got no idea why they're kind of carrying on in this way. The reason why I say there's so many areas of grey, I don't know what sort of day they've had. Uh, their boss may be barking at them uh, and they're just, you know, transferring that grief onto somebody else. If that makes them feel better, don't worry about it. Just take it on, kill it with kindness and just get on with the day. Because like I said, the area of grey is you don't know what sort of day they've had. You don't know if they've had enough sleep that night. They might be getting grief at home. They might be having personal issues. You don't know. It's not black and white with every little single thing. And when you realize things aren't black or white and that there's so many elements of grey in between, you start to take things less personally. And I feel like that has really helped me. This is a great lesson to learn and one that I learned. I used to take things to heart all the time and over the years I've really had to build up a very thick skin. I hardly take anything personally anymore. There's really not much that can rattle me. I feel like I have seen it all. Uh, I've dealt with very difficult and challenging clients and I've also dealt with amazing clients uh, which I feel very blessed and very inspired that I've been able to work with clients like that. But yeah, there will be people that you come across in in any field, in life, it's just life. Don't, th don't take things personally, it's just not worth it. Don't take on other people's stuff because God knows what they're dealing with. Everyone has their own issues, everyone has their own story and sometimes when they're communicating with people, it just, it just comes out. Sometimes they don't even mean it to come across like that. I, I really do think that at the heart of most people is very, very good, uh, but sometimes it just doesn't come out the right way. So don't take things personally. It's really important for you to use your time wisely. The best thing that I've been doing over the last couple of months is being prepared. So I can have between five and six meetings throughout the day. And that means waiting around, waiting in reception lobbies, uh, waiting for meetings to happen, being in boardrooms, waiting for clients to come in. So usually I would probably be waiting around 10 or 15 minutes waiting for a meeting to begin. So what I have started to do is keep uh, reading material in my handbag so that if I have those 10 minutes of time then I can read and educate myself on my industry. So I'll carry trade publications with me. Another great tip I have been uh, taking with me thank you cards everywhere I go. So I keep them in my handbag. When I have five or 10 minutes of time, I can just simply write a little thank you note uh, to somebody who has been amazing that week. And then on my way home, I just post it and, uh, and it's good to go, you know? And, and those little things uh, are so important. And so many people say to me, I just got a thank you card from you last week. How the hell do you have time to write thank you cards? No one does that anymore. Being prepared and, uh, and having that time up your sleeve, it's better than just sitting around checking your Instagram. So be prepared and use your time wisely. This is a real button for me because I probably get told three to four times a day, wow, you are so lucky. And it drives me nuts because I haven't got to where I am today with luck. I have not won the lotto. No one has handed me my life on a silver platter and go, here you go, enjoy it. That just has not happened. Uh, everything that has happened to me has happened because I have gone out and made them happen. It's all about action. The only reason why I got accepted into my university course was because I had done so much work experience to justify the fact that I should be in that course and that was the right career path for me. I really wanted to do a Bachelor of Communications in Public Relations, but when I was at school, to get into that course was higher than like a lawyer or a doctor because it was such a popular course. I knew I wasn't gonna get those marks, you know, it was out of my depth. I was not gonna get 99% on my final exam. It just, I wasn't academic enough for that. Um, I was more like a little entrepreneur that wanted to just go out there and make things happen. So during weekends, during school holidays, during any free time that I had, 
I used to do so much work experience in the field of PR. So I presented like a little dossier of uh, reasons as to why I should be accepted into that course before anybody else, before I sat my HSC, because I was truly passionate about PR and the work experience that I had done had absolutely demonstrated that and I couldn't see anybody else at my school that was doing those things like I was doing. So I presented uh, this kind of essay or uh, argument, I guess, to the university. I made an appointment, I got on the phone and, uh, and I presented this to them. To my surprise, I did get a letter in the mail two weeks after I presented uh, my case to the university and they said they would love to have me in the course. They would absolutely uh, hold a place for me. And no matter what mark that I got in my final exam, that place would be open for me to go and do a Bachelor of Communications. So my kind of go get them sort of take action started from a very young age and I continued that because I knew that it worked. When I was after my first job, uh, I wanted to work for a record company, a major record company. So did everybody else that I knew because it was a popular job. It was a popular industry. Um, and so I, again, needed to do something different and make sure that I stood out from the crowd. Everyone was sending in resumes, um, but no one was like getting on the phone, following these things up. Um, and so I did, I followed up every single day at the same time. So the HR department definitely got to know me and, uh, and then I found the right person to speak to that would have been my boss. Um, within the company that I wanted to work for. I got to know her. I spoke to her on the phone every day at the same time. She would expect my call. So one day when I was just doing my routine phone call to her, um, I was surprised when she said, oh, Angela, I was looking forward to your phone call today because a job has come up and I'd love to speak to you about it. Why don't you come in and we'll have a coffee? So I went in and I had a coffee and by the end of the coffee, I was offered the job and it was my first job in PR, well, official job because I'd been running campaigns and charity work for the last few years anyway, but it was my first official job in my ideal industry and I was so excited. I stayed in that role for eight years and I got so much experience from it. I learned so much. So friends, there is no such thing as luck. I know I've gone on about this for quite some time now, but I'm very passionate in that. And I think if younger people are watching, if you're still at school or at university, um, you know what, just please make goals and make action points and tick them off and get out there and make them happen. Get on the phone and talk to people, get in front of people, print business cards. You might not even like work for anybody at this stage. Just print business cards with your name and your number and your email address on there and, uh, and get out there, go to industry events, go to educational events, educate yourself and, uh, and speak to people because it won't be luck that lands you your ideal job. It will be you and the actions that you do uh, that will set you apart from other people that are also going to go for that job. This is something that I learned a few years ago. You know, that, you know when you meet people and they just talk, talk, talk at you the whole entire time about themselves, about how wonderful they are. And what I found to be more powerful, especially when creating relationships, is to be interested in other people. Listen, stop and just listen to what people have to say. Ask questions about them, get to know them, what makes them tick, uh, what kind of um, inspires them and, and why do they get into the area of work that they, that they are in now. You know, you can learn so much from every single person that comes into your life. So be interested in them and, and try and learn something from somebody every single day. Be interested in people. Don't just be interesting. I mean, sure, of course, be, be, be an interesting person and do great things that make you interesting. But I think you're more interesting if you're interested in other people. Haters, you know what? I love the haters. I gotta say, I love haters because you only ever have haters when you're doing really, really well. Haters don't talk about you when you're not doing well because they haven't noticed you. You know, they've got no reason to talk about you when you're not doing well. So my friends, 
Let haters be a little gauge that you are on the right track and you are doing great things because you'll only ever have haters if you're doing really well. You know, haters are always going to be there. There's always going to be one person or a few people in the crowd that are going to be negative or, or uh, throw criticism at you. Don't be alarmed or surprised if it's someone in your field uh, that's in competition with you. You just have to see it as a compliment that you're doing really, really well because if you're in competition with someone and you're doing great, they're obviously not going to be digging what you're doing because you're obviously taking work away from them. Now, for example, I get that quite a lot because I am quite new school to the world that I'm working in. Um, I've been called numerous names like the beauty queen of PR. Uh, I've been called the little PR upstart, all these sort of things. And that's great. And that does drive me to continue doing what I'm doing because it's obviously working. I'm obviously rattling these people enough that they need to make these comments. So don't be down on the haters. Kind of just embrace the haters those people drive me to be bigger and better and uh, and they encourage me to kind of just keep striving to do what I do and you know at the end of the day I, I kind of just feel sorry for these people because it's a reflection of them not me uh, the easiest thing to do of course is to leave a little message on Facebook or on YouTube even I haven't had a lot of experience yet with uh, with the haters on YouTube a few little comments or whatever but they just crack me up I think it's hilarious um, and uh, and I just go oh you poor person your life must be so miserable if if you're finding pleasure in putting other people down and that's obviously not a world that I want to be part of uh, but it does happen in the world and you just got to get used to it like I said I've got a really thick skin those things don't bother me at all kind of just embrace the haters and and see it as a, uh, a sign that you're actually doing really really well all right I think that pretty much wraps up this video I think I've rattled on long enough um, but I really wanted to thank those people that had sent me messages and asked for a video like this because I would never have thought to do a video like this I wouldn't have thought that anybody would be interested so if you have liked this video give me a thumbs up or leave a comment below and let me know if you want me to do more videos like this because when I started my YouTube channel I just thought I'd be doing fun and uh, and silly videos on handbags and um, and jackets and jewelry and all that sort of thing and makeup uh, but if you guys like these sort of videos and want me to talk more about my work and more about things that I have learnt uh, then yeah let me know leave leave questions below and I will definitely do more of these videos if that's what you guys want so that's it from me I think I've said enough already uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will see you in my next video bye